This is more The Real Creatures of Prime Evil. My name is Luis Chiape, and I am the director of the Dinosaur Institute at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. I've always been interested in animals. I was not one of those kids that can recite all the names of the dinosaurs. I like dinosaurs. I had a couple of dinosaur books and things like that, but I was not necessarily a, a dinosaur fanatic. I was very interested in history. I like history a lot. And I think that in paleontology, I found this blend of my interest for the natural world and my interest in history. In uh, primeval, you have animals that lived 400 million years ago, and the history of humans dates back to six, seven million years. And that's, that's really nothing in comparison to, uh, say, a Tyrannosaurus rex lived 66 million years ago. Giganotosaurus lived about 95 million years ago in what's today Patagonia, in, in Argentina. And Giganotosaurus is one of the largest uh, meat-eating uh, dinosaurs that we know of. Something like a T-Rex, but different. Um, longer arms, uh, three fingers, as opposed to the two of T-Rex. Uh, a little different design in the skull, a little longer, a different design in the teeth. That probably reflects a different function. You can see how much it looks like a knife, essentially. And actually, if you look carefully, you will see that it has a serrated edge, just like a steak knife. And this is a tooth of a T-Rex, but they're built differently. You can see how one is much more compressed and the other is more rounded. It almost looks more like a banana than, than a knife, if you want. It still has a serrated edge, but this tooth was designed for crushing bones. This one is more designed for cutting through flesh. What it tells us is that the, 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 the way they, they kill was different. Giganotosaurus cut through the flesh and slice it like with a sharp uh, knife. And presumably the prey shed a lot of blood and maybe died from either the bite or just simply because of the hemorrhage. Uh, this animal, T-Rex, was able to crush bones. The wound could have been not just bloody, but also impairing the animal to maybe walk with a broken leg or a broken rib cage. All these dinosaurs, although they were uh, capable of bringing down uh, big prey, uh, I'm sure that they would have also eaten other things the same way that, you know, big cats today would kill, you know, a, a zebra, say, but they would also eat, you know, a small animal if needed, a, a rabbit. If this animal is eating a human, I mean, you have to keep in mind that the skulls of these animals were already five, six feet long. These animals killed large dinosaurs, animals that were 40 feet, 50 feet. A human would have been a small bite. You can imagine that they would can easily, any of them, cut the, a human in half. Some of these animals have been um, uh, reconstructed and you see them in movies running uh, really fast, essentially being able to catch with a car. But we don't think that it was really the case. I mean, these animals were, were probably fast for their opponents, but still probably animals that uh, were not able to run uh, faster than 15 or 20 miles an hour, so it's certainly not a match for a vehicle. We know very little of Giganotosaurus. We actually know only a couple of specimens. There's just so many things we would love to know about animals like Giganotosaurus. And one of the very intriguing things is the idea that they could have been pack hunters and have spent a fair amount of their lives in a group. And then, of course, that's the beginning of, of the, the question. Did they have a hierarchy? What kind of structure the group uh, had? Did they live year-round uh, in a group or only they gathered together during a season? So there are all these different uh, questions that we don't know about them. Watch more The Real Creatures of Prime Evil each Wednesday at 8 on KCET.